Well, we are returning to our top story. Singapore is charting a deeper path into the growing global space economy. It is providing more funding into research and development of space technologies. For more, we're joined by Lim Wee Seng, Executive Director of the Satellite Research Centre, and Mark Lim, CEO of Eliana, a Singapore-based space tech company. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, first to you, we say, uh, tell us more about the new small satellite and how is it different from the EXAT? Okay, EXAT is something that we do 10 years ago. It's the first Singapore design satellite. That's, that's something that we're going to explore. But for, but for the past 10 years, we have been starting to build a lot of setup in nice satellite engine that operational is going up. So right now, we're actually looking into something different working much more strategically, differently, and what's the use case and challenging is looking at. So previously, XSAT is about at flying at 500 kilometers. So right now, we are flying something, half of that is 250 kilometers. So for a rough estimate for both of us, is that International Space Station is something about 400 kilometers. So what we are doing right now is something flying lower, is um, not an easy type of track. So if we are not maintaining there, we'll fall into this of um, within a few days. So this is the tricky part on that, maintaining a debt. But what is that? So as compared for XSAT, we have a flying um, optical <coughs> camera in XSAT, but we have a 10 meter resolution flying at 500 to 800 kilometers. But when we had 250 kilometers, we have actually a smaller camera, but we able to get a 0 0.5 meter resolution camera. So those are thumbs of the thing that we're working on at this height of 250 kilometers. Mark, let's bring you in on the conversation here. You and your company have been integral to this development, and it's arguably one of Singapore's most ambitious projects in recent years that we've seen. Uh, tell us more about what tech advancements have been made to make this possible. Well, putting a satellite in video very low of orbit is no mean feat, considering that only two large satellites so far have maintained operation at such altitudes and they were supported by large space agencies such as ESA and JAXA. Now we are trying to fly a satellite at a fraction of that size and maintain those altitudes for future platforms to realize commercial potential. Now, one of the largest challenges that need to be overcome will be atmospheric drag at such low altitudes that will cause satellites to rapidly deorbit and burn up in the atmosphere. The engines that video satellites that JAXA and ESA put up in the past were large and utilized a lot of power for operations, which might seem okay for large satellites, but are not feasible for smaller satellites, where these platforms do not have space to store extra fuel, batteries, or even solar panels to generate power. This is where our local company, Eliana, comes in. As a spin-off from Nanyang Technological University, the company has developed game-changing, low-power and fuel-efficient engines that can counteract the effects of drag effectively. The engine has also been optimized for video operations by giving satellites the flexibility to switch on and off the systems on demand to prioritize other operations as needed. A satellite can be viewed as a large system of systems. An analogy would be to liken them to the human body, where the onboard processor is the brains, the camera is the eyes, and the engine in this case is the beating heart that will allow for the satellites to stay alive at very low of orbits. We are extremely thankful that together with our SMEs, and institutes of higher learning, we have gathered the best technologies and brightest minds that will make this mission a reality in the days to follow. Uh, we say we've just heard from Mark there that one of the challenges is uh, the issue of drag. And I imagine that trialing in space is complex. The research process is complex. From your perspective, what are the other challenges? Uh, I think the, the, the it's space is totally something unknown and a lot of things that we is very difficult to test. So it's like it's vacuum, the temperature change, and just now it's about drag. And all this we can't really test exactly in the lab. Although for the past 10 years, we have accumulated a lot of know-how, accumulated a lot of data. So what we can do is just creating max models, simulators, and some thermal vacuum to do the test. So all this uh Taking a lot of time. The main main the main keywords here over here is this to predict, make model, and do test and test and test. The thing, the only explanation of failure is because you're not enough testing. 
Mark, very quickly, uh, uh, one last question for you. This microsatellite is said to be sustainable. What makes it so? Yeah, we have all heard that space is getting increasingly cluttered due to the number of satellites getting sent into space. There's also the problem of space debris due to jump left by decommissioned satellites at the end of your operational life. We have heard a lot about sustainability being huge on Earth, but I've not thought much about sustainability in space, meaning how can we ensure that space remains a viable and safe environment for future generations to operate it? Now, for our satellite, due to the regime that we're operating in, at the end of its operational life, all we have to do is just switch off the engines and the satellite will naturally deorbit and dispose of itself by burning up in the atmosphere, leaving behind no space jump. And this reduces the potential for collisions in space ensures a safe and clean environment for the generations to follow to operate out of. We strongly believe that Singapore can be a front runner in advocating for sustainable space by entering very low Earth orbits and encourage other space actors to be responsible users of space as well. Uh, gentlemen, perhaps uh, first to, 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 to you, we saying uh, for our final question, uh, the space industry projected to be uh, about a one trillion US dollar industry. I, I'm wondering, remind us what is Singapore's investment in this industry? And do you think it is sufficient for us to play a role in uh, the global space race? I think um, in NT, we have started in space for about 20 years. Officially in Singapore, we have started space about 10 years ago, EDB Austin of the space office. But for in such a short time frame, we actually built up 10 satellites designed and built by Singaporeans. And, and if you look at it, that for past five, five years, you can see a lot of new startup company in Singapore. Eliana is one of them, which is also spin off from NTU. So so you can see actually there are quite a lot of activity. And not forgetting today, our Minister Gun had been mentioned in the GSTC. We talk about Ad Value, a company, a listed company in, in Singapore. They used to be in, not in the non-space sector, but they have created new business and doing an international business in space to today. And not forgetting this is actually started the uh, work with the Ad Value work with NTU in 2015 that we fly a satellite called uh, Velox2, where we start to bring them more than soft, and then and right now they create a new business. So if you look at the past five to 10 years, in fact, Singapore is very vibrant. We have created a lot of new business, new aero, new ideas for the, in the space, international space industry. And right now, ADB Austin office have been pushing the hops into a new disruptive area. So, so and, and this new project of us have been craft out after years and thoughts and experience right now. So we're trying to capture a new market sense. And mm. and within, in, if you look at this, what uh, uh, NTU or IHL is contributing. So, so for example, in this, this project, we actually have another company called Lighthouse. The, this company actually work with uh, cameras, but right now we're working with them to bring the camera up into space. So it will be the first Singapore design optical camera. And, right. and this will be another new business for this company. So you, see, you can see that we're, we're right now the, the IHL, the SME, and the company that non-traditional are working together in, in, in Singapore to create a brand new space. Mm -hmm. And NTU will cultivate, uh, continue to cultivate and attract students, produce scientists like Mark, Dr. Right. Mark right now is building of a company. Yes. So okay. we definitely are able to capture the pie of the satellites of this market Well, it, it, it sounds all very optimistic. Uh, unfortunately, we have run out of time. Uh, Lim Wee Sing and Mark Lim, thank you both for your time. We'll definitely be watching this space.